Hello everyone, welcome back. So, let us continue our discussion on MDOF system. Now, what we have learned is uh, how to model a shear building uh, frame. Let me quickly draw the frame and then uh, we will continue our discussion. So, So, this is a typical shear building frame. So, the first one, first story we have M1, K1, C1 and then K2, C2 and it continues. So, the last one is M, N, K, N, C, N. So, the previous one is obviously N minus 1. Now, we have support motion also at the base and we have discussed in detail how to solve it and in fact, in the last class, we use the concept of response spectrum and how to use that to find out the base shear which is used in design, right. So, up to this point it is fine. Now, the equation of motion if you look at equation of motion, so it is m x double dot plus C x dot plus k x is equal to some f of t. So, let me mark also the degrees of freedom. Now, on the left hand side we have m c k right and these are all n cross n matrix. And on the right hand side, we have the force vector f of t. Obviously, there are n degrees of freedom. So, n cross 1 for each time, for each time point. Now, the issue is uh, when we have this type of equation, what we do? We first decouple the system equations and for that we have introduced this transformation, but we can only apply this transformation provided we know this phi matrix and for that uh, we need to uh, do an eigen analysis of k minus m, uh, k minus omega square m. So, there we need to do an eigen analysis, right. And once we do the eigen analysis, the outcome of this eigen analysis is natural frequency and the mode shape. So, this natural frequency and mode shape, they are further used to decouple the system equation and for that we need to go for this eigen analysis. Now, if you look at this eigen analysis, what is the size of this say k and m matrix n cross n and m also n cross n. At times they are very large. So, there are ways to reduce this matrix and this is what is called um, reduction technique. So, today's discussion is reduction techniques. Now, there are different ways we can actually reduce this matrices. Out of them, we will discuss only two. The first one is what we call static condensation. And the second one is what is called dynamic 
Spanien sich. So first we will start with static condensation and then we will see how we can reduce this uh, matrix size and yet we can solve the system satisfactorily. For that what we do, we have this uh, x that is the generalized coordinate right. Now we split this x into two halves. The first part we mark it xs and the second part is what you call xp. Let me explain first and then we will see uh, how we are going to split this x and then reduce the size of the matrices. Now here P stands for primary. and S stands for secondary. So, what we do? We have the degrees of freedom which are marked here. Out of that, we identify some of the degrees of freedom which we call primary degrees of freedom and the remaining degrees of freedom is what we call they are the secondary degrees of freedom. Now, sometimes we also call it master. So, instead of primary, we call it master and secondary, we call it slave degrees of freedom. So, the idea is we have the complete set of generalized coordinate then out of that we identify some important degrees of freedom and we express the remaining degrees of freedom with the help of this uh, primary or master degrees of freedom. So, our first technique is what we call static condensation. So, static condensation. As the name suggests, we consider the static equilibrium equations as you know this is k x equal to f. Now, if I slightly modify this equation in terms of master and slave, then obviously first thing we do, we split x into two halves x s and x p. Then uh, we can partition the stiffness matrix k accordingly. So, this is k p p, k s s, then k s p and then k p s. Again I repeat. So, we start with this generalized coordinate set and then we split them into master and slave or primary and secondary and accordingly we also uh, segregate the stiffness matrix into respective quadrants. And then obviously, same segregation will be also there in the force matrix and if P is basically the force associated with the primary degrees of freedom and uh, F s uh, which is secondary degrees of freedom we consider it to be 0 for the time being. We can have um, some force also there, but for the time being um, we consider them to be 0. It actually tells us that in a system where we have the generalized coordinate x 1 to x n not all degrees of freedoms are having forcing function. So, we identify those degrees of freedom not having external forces and we consider them to be our secondary system. And the one where we apply this uh, 
external forcing function we call them primary degrees of freedom. So, that is the uh, basic way to split this equation. Now, if we do that what you can easily notice that we can uh, write down the equation. So, first equation will be k s s times x s plus k s p times x p will be equal to 0. So, that is the first equation. The second equation is k p s times x s plus k p p times x p is equal to f of p. So, what we do? We expand this equation and then we basically get these two equations. Obviously, this first equation tells us that x s is equal to what? minus k s s inverse k s p times x p. Now, if you consider this coefficient matrix as capital T, so what we get x s is equal to some transformation acting on x p and this is a important relation you see what we can do we can express all secondary generalized coordinate in terms of primary generalized coordinate and that is precisely what is done here. So, let us mark this equation this is a very important relation. So, this is our third equation. Again I repeat this particular relation tells us that we can express secondary degrees of freedom in terms of primary degrees of freedom through this transformation matrix T. Not only that, we can actually express x which is nothing but x s and x p. Then what we can write here is uh, x equal to then T and I times x p. So, we already know capital T the transformation that is k s s inverse times k s p with a negative sign at the beginning. Now, this relation we call it or let me just modify this expression. So, what we have is x is equal to we call it t bar times x p. So, this is my fourth equation. See the interesting model we identify this primary degrees of freedom and then we can express the complete set of generalized coordinate x in terms of x p through this t bar uh, transformation. Now, now, we can use this relation in equation 2 and then we can further also modify. So, in equation 2 so, what we do use equation 3 in equation 2. Then what we have k p s in terms of x s what we can do we can write t times x p plus we have k p times x p is equal to f p. So, what we get is x p is equal to k 
kps times t plus kpp inverse So now we can solve xp and the moment we solve xp we already know this capital T transformation matrix. So, we can find out xs. So, what we do we solve xp and then use equation to estimate excess. Okay. So, what we get then is x p is equal to k p s times t plus a P P inverse F P and this is the reduced stiffness matrix. Okay. So, now we have one more relation x is equal to t bar times x p. Now, if you recall this potential energy v is equal to half x transpose k x right. So, what we can do? We can write this entire equation in terms of the primary coordinate system. So, we have x transpose here. So, if you do that, it will be x p transpose t bar transpose k. Then, in place of x, we can write t bar and then x p. So, effectively, this quantity is the new stiffness matrix we call it k p times x p. So, when we identify the primary coordinate systems, then along the primary coordinate system we have this um, new stiffness matrix k p. Similarly, if we look at the kinetic energy, this is half x dot transpose m x dot and we can again use this relation. So, x dot transpose can be replaced by x p dot transpose t bar transpose then m then again we have t bar x p. So, effectively again this is the mass matrix when we reduce the system in the primary coordinates. So, this is m p times x p. Similarly, we can also find out equivalent damping matrix and for that uh, we consider again the virtual work done. So, we have delta x transpose 
c times x dot. So, this is basically the damping force multiplied by the virtual displacement. So, uh, when we have this relation again, um, so if we apply a virtual displacement, so delta x transpose will be delta x p transpose t bar transpose c and x dot in place of x dot we will have t bar x p dot and this is basically the damping matrix in the primary coordinate system. So, what we have k p is equal to t bar transpose a t bar, then m p is equal to t bar transpose m t bar and then c p is equal to t bar transpose c t bar. And the equation of motion in the primary coordinate system will be x p double dot times m plus c p times x p dot plus k p times x p will be equal to p. So, that is the reduced system we have and for this system we know all the essential um, matrices. What we need to know is basically x p 0 and x p dot 0. This also we can find out from this relation. If you carefully note from this relation, we can actually estimate what are the initial conditions in primary coordinate system. So, that is all about static condensation. We will solve an example in a minute and we will see how we can reduce a system and then using the reduced system we can estimate the natural frequency. Obviously, uh, because of this reduction a uh, small amount of error may incur, but we will see that uh, uh, we can control that error just by identifying proper set of primary and secondary um, system. So, to sum up what we do, we start with the original um, set of generalized coordinate x, then we actually split it into primary and secondary set. Then we consider the static equilibrium equation. Then from that static equilibrium equation, we again split the complete set of equation into primary and secondary coordinate systems. And uh, what we do, we express first secondary coordinate system with the help of primary and then uh, we uh, develop the relation for the complete set of generalized coordinate. So, if this equation 4 is very important. There we know uh, this T bar uh, transformation matrix and then uh, using that matrix, we can convert the complete set of equation into a new set of equations and that is what is here. Okay. So, we consider now let us consider an example the same 3 of system we solved earlier, let us consider and 3 of system So, reduce it into a 2 DOF system using static condensation.
So, let us uh, go to MATLAB and then we will solve the example. Now, if you recall, uh, this is actually the system. Let me just reduce these values a little bit. So, this is the system what we solved in the previous lecture. So, m 1, m 2, m 3 had 10 kg mass then k 1, k 2, k 3 as you can see on your screen and then uh, if we solve it, we get the response due to L central support motion. Uh, first, let us identify the natural frequencies. So, for that we have this W n. So, the natural frequencies for this system, uh, let me write it here. So, W n is equal to 1.5, let me see, 1.59979. Then the next one is 4.3658. So, 4.3658 and the last one is 6.6624. So, these are the three natural frequencies. So, 6.6624 radian per second. Okay. So, Now, let us also see the stiffness matrix K. So, 270 minus 150 0. So, K matrix is equal to 270 minus 150. 0 minus 150, then 120, then this is minus 120, 0 minus 120, 120. Let us check once more. So, This one mistake. So, this will be two seventy. So, if you look at the system, we have a thread up system, right? x 1, x 2, x 3. So, if we write, so we have here x 1, x 2, x 3. Okay. Now, we let us consider this x 3 and x 2 as the primary degrees of freedom. So, what we do? We split this here. Now, obviously, if we split it there, we have to split the k matrix here. So, we can now identify k s s is equal to 270. 
k s p is equal to minus 150 0 k p s is equal to minus 150 0 and then k p p is equal to 270 minus 120 minus 120 and then 120. So, what we can calculate is uh, T matrix. So, if we see the expression for T matrix, here it is there. So, minus K S S inverse K S P minus K S S inverse K S P. So, we will do that in a minute. So, we can find out this T. Now, T bar is what it is T and I. Right. So, let us use MATLAB So, what we can do at the end, let us define K S S is equal to 270 K S P is equal to minus 150 0 then K P S is equal to minus 150 0 K P P is equal to 120 minus 120 now sorry this is 270 minus 120 then minus 120 then finally 120 and T matrix is equal to minus inverse of K S S star K S P. So, if we just do the calculation for this part only, so now we have the transformation matrix capital T. So, we have to develop this T bar. So, let us do that. So, we have T there, T bar will be equal to capital T and then there will be identity matrix. So, So, that is the T bar transformation matrix, right. Yeah. And then we have to find out the mass and stiffness matrix in the reduced coordinate. So, M P is equal to T B transpose star M star T B. So, that is the mass in the reduced primary coordinate system you can see. Similarly, we have to also calculate stiffness 
in the new coordinate system. So, we have this k p in the new primary coordinate system. So, what we have is uh, mass and stiffness in the primary coordinate system. So, what we do? We do eigen analysis. So, for that we have k p and m p given and then omega n p that is the natural frequency based on primary coordinate system is So, let us do that. Now, you can see on your screen, we started with the natural frequency which is here and our natural frequencies was 1.5979, then 4.3658 and 6.6624. So, we started with a 3 dof system that we reduce into a 2 dof system and in the reduced coordinate system, we have mass and stiffness matrix and based on that, if we do the eigen analysis, then obviously, in the reduced framework, we have 2 coordinates. So, we will at best get 2 natural frequencies and that is what we have here and you see the estimate, the first one is 1.6066 in place of 1.5979 and the second one is 4.8665 in place of 4.3658. So, you can easily sense that we can use the reduced coordinate system and instead of working on the full size matrix, we can now have a re reduced coordinate system and there we can operate to find out the structural response. And for that, we have to recast the system and uh, we have already found out the mass and uh, stiffness. Similarly, we can also find out uh, damping in the new coordinate system and that completes the exercise. So, if we see the damping matrix in the new coordinate system, that is the damping matrix. So, we can now solve the complete system in the new coordinate system and the natural frequencies also you can see they are very close. So, that is all about static condensation. Of course, we can write a generic code and uh, find out all this, but I thought to go through each and every step so that you can follow the calculations that is adopted in static condensation. And you can develop that code uh, at your end. So, I leave it as an exercise. Now, once we have this static condensation, there is a better option and that is what we call dynamic condensation. So, dynamic condensation. For dynamic condensation as the name suggests, we consider the dynamic equilibrium equation. So, free vibration equation we consider So, this is m x double dot plus k x is equal to 0. So, again what we do? We have x as the complete set of generalized coordinate. So, what we do? We split them into two groups, one we call primary, another we call secondary and the main aim is to express secondary coordinate systems in terms of primary coordinate systems. So, if you do that, obviously, we can split the mass matrix into m S S M S P M P S 
and the name P P. So, X S double dot then X P double dot plus we can also split K matrix into K S S S P K P S K P P times X S x p is equal to 0. So, we can now develop the eigen equation very easily. So, it will be k s s minus omega i square m s s then k s p minus omega i square m s p then k p s minus omega i square m p s and finally, k p p minus omega i square m p p. You know how to transform this free vibration equation into this eigen um, solution that I am not going to repeat. We have already done it. The thing is you have to assume the trial solution and then satisfy the dynamic equilibrium equation and you will get this expression. Obviously, in this equation omega i that is the natural frequency i th omega i is the i th natural frequency, which we do not know at the beginning. So, in this dynamic condensation, it is actually done in a iterative way. So, uh, iterative procedure is followed in dynamic condensation. So, initially you start with omega i equal to 0 and then what you can do step 1 you can find out that T and T bar matrices that is you modify this equation. So, it will be i minus t bar 0 some d or d bar times x s x p is equal to 0 0. In the previous example, we have manually identified this t and t bar, but you can do it using a technique called Gauss Jordan elimination technique. So, this is what is shown here. It is very simple. You have to apply row operations over this matrix and then convert this first segment into i and the second one into 0 and then automatically you will get this t bar matrix and then d bar matrix. So, your 
x s is equal to t bar or t times x p and x is equal to t bar times x p. So, that is the transformation we have. Then what we go? We go to step 2. We find out m p is equal to t bar transpose m t bar and k p is equal to t bar transpose k t bar and then step 3 we recast the eigen equation into primary coordinate system and then find out the w or omega i. Then repeat the procedure until the convergence is achieved. So, that is the procedure for dynamic condensation. It is uh, very similar to what we have done in case of static condensation. Our main objective is to find out these two transformation matrices and for that we use this, um, you can use this Gauss-Jordan elimination technique and then uh, using that you can find out the transformation matrix and then finally you get the mass and stiffness matrix in the reduced coordinate system and then automatically find out this omega i uh, that again uh, you go back to the initial step and the repeat the exercise. Sometimes in place of this omega i equal to 0 at the initial stage, what we do? We use the result from the static condensation. That is also good guess to start with uh, or you can also have any other uh, favorable options if possible, but uh, that is the static condensation point is the good starting point to have a quick convergence may be in 2 to 3 iterations. So, this is the procedure for dynamic condensation. What I will suggest that you do this procedure at your end, follow the same uh, steps that we have done for static condensation, but in this place you have this um, dynamic equilibrium equation. Uh, for free vibration and then we cast this eigenvalue problem and then iteratively we find out what is omega i. So, uh, you try it, develop a small code uh, for that same thread of system uh, what we have already solved using static condensation and then repeat the same with dynamic condensation and if you have any um, trouble do let us know in the open session we will discuss in detail. But try this at your end and you will see uh, it is uh, far more accurate than uh, static condensation and uh, in fact, the commercially available softwares, they have these options in their uh, package. For example, ANSYS, uh, you will find uh, the options for primary and secondary coordinate systems or master and slave coordinate systems, so that you can reduce and condense a large uh, system matrix into smaller one and then operate over that new uh, set of primary coordinate system to have a uh, efficient computation without compromising the quality of end result. So, continue this exercise and do let me know if you need any further help and then in the open session we will uh, discuss further on this topic. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.